day again guys welcome back to the channel in case you're new here I'm Walt Moore also known as Dan Wilson and today has been a very wet rainy day here in southeast Missouri so not much going on outside today it's a slopping wet mess out there and so I got some indoor projects to work on and as some of you guys know I've been a singer songwriter musician for most of my life since I was a kid and today I'm beginning some work on an old PV mixer amp that I've had for quite a long time now. Got this old mixer amp about the early 1980s. I'll show it to you guys here in just a second or two. And anyway, just uh, doing some little cleaning on it and some basic maintenance. It's got a few problems these days, so amp's been around for 30 plus years. I'm thinking it's about a 1983 model, I believe. Seems about right anyway. But it's got a few problems going. Let me swing the camera around here and go ahead and show it to you guys. Well guys, here it is. I have it laying on its back right now. Makes it a little bit easier to work on that way. As you can see right up here that it's a PVXR600C mixer amp. But it's been a really good one for a lot of years. I've used this old mixer amp out on more live music shows than I can possibly remember. Let me show you some of the basic stuff on here, just in case you're not familiar with some of this stuff. If you are, and if you find this boring, just, <laughs> I guess, skip it over and go watch something else. might be interesting, but uh, just if you're new to some of this type of equipment there, I'll just show you some of the basic stuff on here. If you look down at the bottom, we have right here what is called an XLR connector. Now this is for a low impedance connection, such as low impedance microphone, maybe an amplifier line output or whatever. And if you notice, they use the letter Z representing impedance. And some folks just call it low Z, which is okay. That actually stands for low impedance. Right next to that over here is a quarter inch, what's usually called a TRS connection. And that is for high impedance, such as maybe electric guitar, or high impedance microphones, or what the heck ever. And these are all the same all the way across here. That's a six channel model. I got right here. On down the line here, we have several different outputs here. We got our main output, which can be connected to a main PA system if needed, or what the heck ever. Here's a monitor output for additional monitors. Then we have an effects output there. And on down we go. Graphic EQ, input output. So if we need to add an external equalizer or whatever, we can just patch it through right there. Here's a switch, or a, I mean a jack and a safe for a foot switch. What this will do here is pretty handy because when we're doing music, sometimes I have some reverb on, or maybe a delay effect or what the heck ever. And, and if we're just talking, we don't want to have that on there, so we can put a foot switch on there and just uh, bypass the reverb temporarily. Here's just some auxiliary inputs right here. This could be for, um, I don't know, whatever. <laughs> Uh, for maybe a turntable or a radio or just what the heck ever uh, power amp input right there. What this does right here just bypasses all these controls you see on here and just goes directly into the power amp. So if we maybe had a different mixer or a separate mixer and just needed to use this as the main power amp supply, that's what that's on there for. So to go over some of the basic controls on here at the bottom here we have our level control moving on up we have our monitor control then we have our low frequency it goes up to a mid then our high range uh, basically what we call treble control <laughs> and at the very top here we have our effects control this controls the amount of reverb on each and every channel these are all identical all the way across here so just some of the basics on there let you guys probably know this stuff but I have a lot of new folks on my channel just maybe uh, starting out with equipment like this and just want to pass along a few things you guys will be newbies at some of this stuff here so most of these controls on here on our equalization in case you're wondering what's going on with the old PV mixer well after so many years it gets some dirt accumulation on the controls that are more or less called potentiometers is the term for those 
and they started getting dirty and so I got two or three channels on here that are just kind of cutting in and out they're not making a real good connection and in parts of it when I'm turning some of the control knobs like the uh, level and the um, EQs and what the heck ever it's just making a real scratchy noisy sound in there and that usually is just a sign of dirt accumulation so over the next day or two I'm gonna be taking this mixer all apart maybe not entirely at least the front panel on here and give it a thorough cleaning uh, what I have right here guys a can of CRC brand QD electronic cleaner have a good look at that this is some really really good stuff I've used this for stuff for a lot of years now and this stuff is non-conductive so when you put this on electronic stuff it's not going to short anything out or cause any kind of problem with your equipment really good stuff and it's called CRC electronic cleaner stuff's about four something dollars a can but well worth it it's a very very good product and what this stuff does is it cleans all those potentiometers and all the connection points and everything else gets rid of the dirt and it also helps to lubricate and also keeps from letting future dirt accumulate on the control so there you go good stuff well guys time to delve in on the old PV mixer amp repair not really repair just a maintenance procedure so how you guys like my heater over here by the way that's the old glow warm wall mount there putting out some nice heat on a cold cold winter day I've had this old heater for a lot of years and still working really good okay so guys back to what we're working on here and this front panel right here where all the controls are has to at least come loose maybe not entirely out of the case but since it's loose it might as well come out and then uh, do a little cleaning on the uh, PC board and with some of these they just have wires that connect back here and they just go back into a connection point here toward the back side of the mixer or whatever this one's a PC board mount and I'll show it to you guys and leave this thing pulled out of here the rest of the way so what I had to do here is take out three screws I just stuck these back in here kind of loosely it has three screws here across the bottom to hold this panel in <clears throat> along the top over here it just has two screws there's one over in here and one over on the other side right here so these got to come back out okay guys on the back side here as I was telling you this is a PC board mount in case you're wondering letters PC stand for perforated circuit board this is what this is now this mixer is unplugged it's turned off so I can touch anything on here without causing a problem <clears throat> this is what the back side of the PC board looks like you can see there's thousands of connections on here several wires and stuff uh, coming off the back side here I may or may not need to remove these I don't know yet and just uh, all this goes to another PC board back here in the back of the mixer for right now we're just going to concentrate on this front control panel right here and see what we can do with it so well the next thing that needs to happen here on our front panel let's go ahead and pull this back out of here again swing it around here so you guys can have another good look at this okay to get this front panel off of the PC board or I should say to expose the PC board all these knobs have got to come off of here just one by one guys got all the control knobs off of it just a minute ago well, the next thing that has to happen is all these little nuts and washers on the quarter inch TRS connectors have got to come off over here or we hit these on the side over here we call RCA jacks these are for a tape recorder tape in tape out there's a little small Phillips screw right down in there you probably can't see it very well that holds this in place here then on each one of these controls right here there's a small nut on here that has to come off as well this is going to take a day or two to, and I took all the uh, nuts and washers off the quarter inch TRS connectors just a bit ago and took off all the nuts holding on all the uh, control potentiometers wrong through here left it all loose just take the cover here as you can see that just comes right off of it okay guys a big moment we've been waiting for again the first time I ever had this particular mixer amp apart and here is the ma main control board uh, PC board right there it is guys hoping you can see it okay a lot of parts in there a lot of resistors capacitors uh, several IC chips even well, potentiometers and various things so that's what it looks like on the inside there 
So here in just a little bit, I'll be getting some more cleaning going off this thing. Turn it like that, but you can see a little better. This is actually a two-piece uh, unit here. I actually, I pull that cover off the first time. I thought I may have broken something here, but if we look on the back side here, you can see the uh, other section here, or the two sections held together with what's called a ribbon cable, right there in the middle of that. So the one I got here, my right hand, is actually the output section which is made separately from on the input side over here. So anyway, that's what it looks like. I'm trying to be very, very careful, guys. If you do this stuff on your own, try to be very gentle with it. You do not want to crack a PC board and break a connection in there, or else it'll, it'll take a lot more repair to fix that. So. so once I get all the controls cleaned thoroughly with electronic cleaner, and a little touching up here and touching up there. Hopefully it'll be working like new again. So anyway guys, that's what a PC board looks like on a PV mixer amp. This one being an XR600C model. Now since I didn't get around to showing you guys some of the cleaning process I had going on here, I got a little bit of a rush, like I said, putting the same back together again just last night. And I brought another one of these, in case you're not familiar with what a potentiometer is. Essentially this one is a volume control, the other one's on here for equalization and effects and different things, but it's going to get you a pretty good shot of this thing here. This, these are all pretty similar, if you can see it very well or not. This is actually a stereo volume control, and they all look about the same, they're pretty similar. So if you need to clean one of these, there's usually some opening spots. This going to be a little hard to show on camera, but hopefully I get this for you guys. Usually right up under the connection points here. There's a little opening spot there. Again, I'm using this good CRC brand electronic cleaner, really good stuff. You just take this and give it a couple shots. Just kind of, it's like that. Shoot stuff in there. Once you do that, you want to take your knob or your control right here and just rotate it back and forth several times. That helps spread the cleaner around and gets all the contact points nice and clean. Also helps kind of lubricate it so it'll operate more freely. So, real simple process. On this mixer, of course I had here six channels to do, there are one of these controls here. Over here I got a, it's called graphic EQ section over here, so I cleaned all the sliders out and looked real good. Then I got the master controls and stuff over here all cleaned up. So, here in a little bit, we putting this panel back in. I was going to show you guys something else I was working on a little bit earlier. Guys, just for the heck of it, here's a quick look on the inside of the old mixer. You see on the back side of the PC board back in there where it has a lot of transistors and other components. Make it operate. A little problem I had too, this little booger here across the front is known as the reverb chamber. So if we want some reverb added to our music or whatever, it passes through there. And that's what creates the reverb problem I discovered is for some reason a couple of screws had fallen out along the way. This old mixer has been on the road with me for quite a number of years. So I placed one there, one back over here on the back so I know you can't see it but it's way back down in there. Here's a booger to get to. I got a new screw in there so I got this thing all fastened down very securely so it's in really good shape now. Everything else looks good. I checked all the wires out and all the other components all looking good. I also took my shop vac and gave it a good thorough cleaning. Okay guys, got the old PVXR600C mixer amp all put back together again. And here it is once again. All reassembled, thoroughly cleaned on the inside. Uh, reassembly went very, very well. Couldn't have gone much better. The old front control panel that you see there just went right on back in the case there. Got the screws back in. Mounting screws that is, top and bottom. And it is looking good. Needs some more exterior cleaning, I know. This thing has <laughs> gotten a little dirty over the years, but I'll scrub it down uh, sooner or later. Get it cleaned up good. Anyway, guys, uh, I was going to show you a little more video on reassembly. As I mentioned before, I just got in a little bit of a rush there and just wanted to go ahead and get it back together again. But it uh, went together real well. Got that all done just yesterday. 
Don't ever show you the back side of it over here. It's just got some pretty simple stuff there. On off switch right there. Those are speaker output jacks. Of course power cord there. It's got a fuse right up in there. This big old thing on the back here is a heat sink. That's what helps dissipate some of the heat, or actually I should say most of the heat when the amp is in operation, so it prevents overheating or anything. So anyway, it went back together quite nicely. Of course I've been doing this kind of stuff for a lot of years now. And I thought while well, I got the old camera on, I'm gonna turn the old mixer on. As I mentioned before, it's making some scratchy noises and had a couple channels not even working right on there. It go turn the volume up and just just got nothing going on. So it's all cleaned up now. <laughs> it's like some good old cleaning and maintenance to get an old mixer amp like this back in service again. I really haven't tested every single part of it, such as the EQs and the reverb section, graph EQ. But in the coming days, I'll check all that out, make sure it's all working right. There's no reason why it shouldn't be. So what I have right over here is my good old AKG D3700 dynamic microphone, which I've had for years and years and years on a nice tripod stand. So, okay guys, once again, it's what I call electronic repair judgment day. So if this works like it's supposed to, we're supposed to see a little red power indicator come on right over there, and there it is. Power indication's up. And we got the microphone plugged in here on channel 6, so we'll just turn our volume up a little bit here. Usually this master gain right here. For a small room, I just put that on about 4, about like that. That one right about there. Let's see if we're getting any sound out of it or not. Audio check on channel 6. Audio check on channel 6. <laughs> Hope you guys can hear that okay. At least to my old ears, that sounds pretty nice and clean. Anyway, the old PVXR600C mixer amp, as far as I can tell so far, is working like new again. Maybe a little more adjusting on the controls, such as the equalization, some of the effects are going to need to be reset, and graphic EQ, and so on and so forth. But I'll just keep checking it out and tweaking and tweaking and tweaking. So, one more look. PVXR600C came together quite nicely. Oh, by the way, guys, if you're curious what kind of speakers I'm using with the old mixer, I'll spin the old camera around here and show you one of them. Something else I've had for a lot of years. I got a bunch of parts and stuff sitting on top of it right now. That's one of my old PV uh, monitor speakers. That's actually a monitor which can also be used for regular PA as well. And usually stand it up right like that, or it's got a like, nice little uh, angle here on the back of it. So I can set it down at an angle like that. Puts it at about a 45 degree angle for on stage use as a monitor. And that helps in reducing feedback whatever but that's one of them well thanks a lot for checking out the video I really appreciate it if you guys are new here again I'm Walt Moore I'll go by the name Dan Wilson if you haven't done so yet I strongly encourage you to subscribe to my channel here on YouTube and for more electronic repair videos and more how to do it on a lot of different stuff in life always trying to help you guys out as much as I possibly can if you like stuff like this be sure to hit that like button and stay tuned for more videos to come you guys take care and God bless, and I'll check in with you on the next video.